season. You are our wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. We choose to put you at the center of our church family life as we celebrate your birthday. Keep us from distractions and help us to invite you into all our family activities. Teach us to pray and help us to glorify and worship you and our family during this busy time of year. Give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation that we might know you better. Thank you for being Emmanuel, God with us. Open our eyes to realize this each day as we interact with others. Help us to be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another just as you forgive us. Show us creative ways to love and care for those outside our home. Fill us to overflowing with your love for the lost. Teach us to do acts of kindness to those who are in need at this time of year. May our family be refreshment and light to others. Help us to share your truth and be your light. You are the savior of the world. We love your word and choose to make it central in our church family life. Your word is alive and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It's, it judges the thoughts and attitudes of our hearts. We long to align ourselves spiritually with you and your word every day. Open our eyes that we may see wonderful things in your law, Lord. Lord, teach us to pray for our families, friends, school, and workplace. We want to experience the life-giving power of your word on a daily basis in our family. Show us truth in your word and bring it to life through our prayers. Open the eyes of our hearts that we may be enlightened in order to know the hope to which you have called us. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. We'll pray now, our, our Father, okay?
this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord.
watch out, you better not cry, you better not cry, I'm telling you why, Santa Claus is coming to town. And out who's naughty or nice Santa Claus is coming to town He knows you when you're sleeping He knows when you're awake He knows he's coming to town He knows you when you're sleeping Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, to 
because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there to register and was married. He was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for a baby to be born. And she gave her firstborn. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over them while at night. What is the gift we received at Christmas? Christmas is when, when Jesus is born. Is Jesus the gift? For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Well done. Jesus is the perfect gift that was sent from us from heaven. How is Jesus our gift to Christmas? God's greatest gift is when he gave us eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ. What do you think, dear? Jesus is perfect, but no one on this earth is perfect. And they were, good, they were not good enough to receive him. Wow, that's amazing. Why did he do that? God knows that we all aren't good enough. That's why he sent his son. This is grace. We got so much, but we don't deserve it. For God's grace, he brought his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. So whoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. God extended his, his grace to others, even when we were sinners. As we received God's greatest gift from Lord Jesus Christ, by grace. This Christmas, he wants us to live by grace and extend it to others. I'm happy to hear this, Dad. I hope to get a gift even if I'm not good enough. Does that mean I can stay naughty all my life and still continue to receive gifts? Watch out, dear. God's grace is granted to all sinners that are humble in spirit to realize their great need for Him to save them. By accepting this gift, they start living a life of righteousness and hopefulness. For the work of God's grace in their lives in the same way as we receive gifts, for when we are still back, we are not to take advantage for the kindness of the giver, but rather be humble and decide to be good from there on. But God gave us many great gifts on Christmas. Not, not only on Christmas, but, but on Christmas we remember when Jesus was born. So children, as we celebrate the birth of our Savior this year, let us remember his grace, by which we receive Jesus this year and all good gifts from him, not because we deserve it. I'm asleep now. Christmas is around the corner. It's the time to reflect on what Christmas is all about. The passage we will read today is from Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 20. Rita, would you like to read that? Of course. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, the Savior has been born to you. He is Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find... A baby wrapped in clothes, cloth, and lying in a manger. Okay, let's watch it. Such a bright night. I, take, I can't take my eyes off the stars. True, but I'm so tired I can hardly keep my eyes open. <laughs> I can't believe all the sheep went to sleep so I can finally have a nice nap. Oh, and dear shepherd, since your eyes are wide open, Please keep an eye out on the wolves, and another eye out on the sky. You know what? I even forgot to take a shower. That's not a surprise. You always smell like sheep, don't you? You mean you do not smell like one too? Cut it off, you two. We all smell like sheep, and there's nothing wrong with that. We know, but don't say it out loud. 
You guys can be ashamed of it, but I don't care. I'm proud of being a sheep. Yeah, no way. I'm not joking. Our prophet Moses smelled like one for 40 years uh, in the wilderness before he became a prophet. Well, at least he became a prophet. We're going to stay sheep. I mean, shepherd. Um, let alone, some people think we're stupid. Think? That's a clever way of putting it. I can't believe what happened the other day. What happened? Remember that crime scene that happened? Well, there, there between the between the stranger and the shepherd next door, there's a big fight. Yes. But when they went to court, the shepherd was not considered, but the stranger was, who was being wrong, and the shepherd, who was right, was put into prison. We shepherds are so despised and looked down on. Nobody gives us any credit. Yeah, and people can't even live without the meat and milk we provide them. Oh well, after all, our father David was also a shepherd, and Samuel did not look at him, but God did and blessed him. Yeah, but he became a king and did not stay a shepherd. And do you know who else? Our fathers Abraham and Jacob were both shepherds too, and they were blessed by the Lord greatly. Yeah, but they became fathers of all generations. They didn't stay shepherds. Who knows? We may not stay shepherds after all. Yeah, we can be nice meals for the wolves. That's something different. Yeah, with your sheep perfume, that's gonna happen. Okay, no use talking to you. I'm going to sleep. Good night. Me too. Good night. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that is for all the people. In the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. Uh, you will find the, the child wrapped in cloth laying in a manger. Wow, these are great news. Let's go to Bethlehem to see what's going on. What do you see in the story? Shepherds seeing a bright light and, a and angels in the dark night. Uh, a angels told the shepherds about the birth of Jesus. The news of Jesus' birth is great joy to all people. The shepherds were overjoyed to see Jesus and they were praising God. The shepherds are the lowest people in society. They are not appreciated or respected by others and they do not, they do not have rights like others. Why do you think God chose the shepherds to tell the great news of Jesus' birth? You mean they were not good enough to be told this news? God should have announced Jesus' birth to important people like those synagogues, people in high positions, rich and wealthy leaders, and the good people of society, not those lowly shepherds. Yeah, they do not deserve it. I guess this is God's grace. It's when we receive something we don't deserve. Yes, the shepherds did not deserve this royal treatment from God the King, but they received it. And they received it with great joy. They believed in angels and they went to see the newborn baby. That was the shepherds' first Christmas gift. And they praised God. Great, so what do we learn from this story as we celebrate Christmas this year? and imperfect people like us. Which leads us to conclude our lesson with Romans chapter 5, verse 8. God demonstrates his own love towards us, and while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Now that we learn about God's grace, the challenge begins with living with God's grace and sharing it with others. Okay, class is over, and go and live with God's grace and share it with Christmas. 
I hear that she's very creative and comes up with different games and activities for the entire class. And her class always wins competitions and comes in first for best Christmas decorated classroom. Seriously? Is it you guys are um, excited about? Yeah. Bunch of kids. What do you mean, bunch of kids? We're all in the same class and of the same age. Yeah, but we think like adults and act like grown ups, unlike you little ones. Why do you guys always have to pick on us? Because we're better than you. Smarter than you. More popular than you and own more things than you. Come on, everyone, come to class. We're about to begin. This Christmas, our gift exchange game will be different. All those who want to participate in Kris Kringles will write down your name on this hat and put it in this hat. You can come and check the name on who you want to give this Christmas. I'm not playing this silly game. I have everything I want and I'm not missing a thing. You're not gonna play Kris Kringle with us. Come on guys, it's gonna be so much fun. My parents buy me everything I want. So whatever gift I get will can compare to what I already have. I, I don't need anything from anyone. I know you're fortunate to be born from rich parents, but it's nice to receive a gift once in a while. I agree with Patrick. Most of the time, the gifts we get are the ones we don't need or the ones we don't want. So why even bother getting a gift for someone else? Come on, if you guys don't play, come on, if you guys don't play with me, who am I gonna have to play with? Those losers? Okay, I'll do you a favor to play for your sake. Thanks. What about you, Patrick? I'm I'm not changing my mind. I I don't need your gifts. Okay everyone, you can come and check out the name on who you wanna give this Christmas. I'm gonna pick Jason. Why on earth would you do that? He's not our friend. He picks on you and you're going to get him a gift? Are you out of your mind? Well, remember how the other day at Sunday school we were talking about putting grace into action? So I better get on with it. I remember mom also explained the meaning of grace to us and how and how God's, God gave his only begotten son to us. Not because we deserve him, but out of his love. I guess I should get a gift for Daniel. You guys are crazy. I'm not getting any of them anything. They don't deserve spending my own money on them when they're loaded. Forget it. Let's go shopping tonight. Let's go. Merry Christmas. Next giver is Rita. Merry Christmas. What? You? Why are you giving me a gift? Because it's Christmas, the season of grace. Next giver is Miriam. 
Merry Christmas. What? Why are you giving me a gift? I didn't pick your name in um to give you a gift. As a matter of fact, I don't even like you. I know you don't. That's why I'm giving you a gift. I am gift. But I don't deserve it. Neither did I deserve the gift of grace at first from given to me from Jesus. But I humbly accept it. Thank you. Next giver is Grace. Yeah, yeah. Merry Christmas. Now all the gifts are distributed. Have a very Merry Christmas and enjoy your holidays.